Good evening and welcome to the Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee meeting of Tuesday, November 16, 2021. Uh, first item on the agenda is identify potential, potential conflicts of interest. You have the packet in front of you. Does anyone feel they have a conflict? If not, we'll move on. Next up is the consent agenda, which consists of the minutes of the November 2nd, 2021 meeting, a report on personnel actions and the bills and the payroll. Are there any questions? If not, what's your pleasure? Motion by Spiros to approve. Second by Wetzel. Discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And it passes unanimously. Consideration of items removed from the consent agenda, there are none. I would like to make a, an announcement that uh, I received an email that two items have been pulled from the agenda. Now, item number six is request to recommend council approval of the 2022 ambulance rates. And item number 10, request to recommend council approval for creating a permanent part-time position in the library. Those have been pulled from the agenda for tonight. So we move on beyond that. It would be item number seven, recommend council approval to appoint Pete Fletty as acting fire chief, effective December 18, 2021, presented by Scott Owen. And there he is, Scott, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, so uh, as everyone's aware, I've submitted my retirement. My last day uh, in office is December 17th, uh, 2021. Uh, during my three-month absence last year, uh, Pete Fletty was named uh, the acting chief, did a great job. Um, he has been um, appointed uh, by the PFC again to be the interim chief uh, starting December 18th uh, when I am uh, done with the city. Uh, and so with that, uh, we request to recommend to council approval of making uh, Pete Fletty the interim fire chief. And the purpose of this, Scott, is basically the, the, the Fire and Police Commission has already made that determination. This is just a payroll thing, right? Correct. Okay. So that's the, that's why it's brought before us, right? Okay. What's your wishes? Mr. Wetzel? Move to approve. And there's a second by Mr. Handler. Discussion? The being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Uh, number eight, request to recommend council approval to refill two vacant firefighters positions. Chief, you still have the floor. Last one. Um, so back um, on November uh, 10th, uh, Lieutenant Brad Breyer retired from the fire department. Uh, today, Deputy Chief John Lucarelli uh, is completing his last 24 hour shift and he is retiring uh, effective 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. And so we have two openings uh, that uh, the PFC has uh, approved to be refilled. Um, to fill these two uh, vacancies. And so we request to recommend to council approval to refill. Motion by Handler, second by Wetzel. Discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, well, you'll make another appearance there before. Oh, yes, I will be, yep. Oh, good. We'll get our slot shots. I, I got a few more meetings left. I think, I think Mr. Handler called it kick at the cat. I think that's what it is. So. And next item on the agenda is uh, <laughs> recommend uh, to the council the approval of two and refill of two vacant patrol officer positions presented by Pat Zapps, acting police chief. Good evening. Uh, on September 13th, I did take a resignation from Detective Christine Zupons. That was effective on October 14th of this year. And we also have a retirement coming up in January of Lieutenant Dennis Keffer. <coughs> With the filling of both of these positions internally, that'll leave us with two vacant patrol positions. Uh, as Scott did, I did seek approval from the Police and Fire Commission at the November 10th meeting, and they approved the refilling of both positions. So with that, I would request the approval from this body to fill both vacant patrol positions. The first one we would look to fill immediately. The second we would not fill until uh, Lieutenant Keffer's departure, but we'd like to seek approval for that tonight as well. Okay. Motion, Motion by Ashwell, second by Handler. Discussion? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, with some of the other changes that have happened, other retirements and so on, are you then fully staffed or are you still short staffed? We are technically fully staffed right at this moment. However, the person that we offered our last position to, 
uh, that we sought approval for. He is currently on a military leave, so he won't actually start until March. So we are technically down one, but we do have an officer to hire that individual that will come on board in March. So technically we're full staff, but sort of technically we're not. Okay, that's all I wanted, thanks. <laughs> What's your wishes? Did we already vote on that? We already voted on it. Yes, we did. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Item number 11 recommend council approval to make senior coordinator position, parks and recreation, a permanent part time position, and submit the new job description to the city's compensation called to the consultant for pay scale placement. And Mr. Casperson, you're already at the podium. Good evening. Uh, Park and Recreation employs a, a part-time position called a senior coordinator. Uh, their duties obviously involve uh, the coordination oversight of the senior, sitter, senior citizen activities, programs, and events. Uh, the last person was hired in June of 2018 and then resigned in February of 2020. After that, the pandemic started and we didn't fill the position because things were slow and events and activities uh, were not at high capacity. As things got back to normal, we did extend an offer to a new position. Uh, during the hiring process, it was brought to our attention that this position no longer is considered seasonal casual and does not fall under the compensation plan as it did in the past. Uh, this, position, this position is considered uh, part-time. However, it should be considered permanent part-time as part of the non-represented compensation plan. It was suggested that this committee's, with this committee's approval, it should be sent to McGrath uh, for evaluation and placement in a non-representative compensation plan. Uh, this change will allow the position to be eligible for limited benefits, including holidays, vacation, sick leave, uh, and life insurance, but does not change the position's hours, duties, or structure. Uh, based on McGrath's recommendation, it'll be brought back to finance for review and final approval. Uh, we don't know what the rec uh, impact will be on our budget because that would be determined on their placement in the compensation plan. Included in your packet is the senior center uh, job description. It is our, our recommendation to send this to McGrath for review and compensation recommendation and bring back to this committee. What are your wishes? Um, I'll make a motion to a recommend approval to the we have a motion by Paschal, second by Mr. Wetzel. Okay, Mr. Wetzel, you need, want to be recognized? Thank you. Um, this is simply to get it onto the um, official pay scale, right? We're not seeing it, or are you going to immediately fill then as well? It, the offer's already been extended to this individual. Okay, so we're just looking to figure out how much they're going to make. We already offered them a pay, which will be probably less than what's being recommended by McGrath. Because it's part of a different compensation plan, as our seasonal casual plan. Okay, so once McGrath comes back, then we'll weigh in on. Mm -hmm. just, All right. right, thank you. Can, you. You have something to say? Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say it's not a seasonal position, though. So, and that's the reason. It's always been a, a kind of a permanent part time, but it's been under the seasonal casual okay. compensation so plan. We're just sort of correcting it to fit in where it belongs. Yeah, nothing has changed on the position. The structure, its hours, its duties, its responsibilities, those are all the same. Okay. Any further questions? We have a motion by Paschal, second by Wetzel to approve. And this will be sending it off to McGrath, and we'll be looking at it again when it comes back from McGrath. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, carry. Okay, yeah, you, you don't lose your place either, Justin. Uh, uh, no. Request uh, to recommend council approval to refill vacant zoo manager position. Go ahead. Our zoo manager, Steve Burns, uh, submitted his letter of resignation last week. Uh, I want to thank Steve on not only the behalf of the city, the Parks and Rec, but the community for his uh, commitment and dedication, especially to our zoo. Uh, Steve's last day will be December 20th. Uh, this memo is uh, to request to replace his position uh, in, our, in our city. What did you say his last day will be? Uh, December 20th. Okay. What's your pleasure, please? Motion by Handler. Second by Spiros. 
to, I assume has to approve, Mr. Hamlin. Thank you. And Mr. Wetzel. Thank you. I see there's a red letter, uh, 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 updated version of the job description in the packet. Is that correct? That's correct. Any significant changes from your perspective? No. Okay. So then be no change. We'll just no. everything as is hire whoever we can find. Yeah, just some minor grammatical things. On. Okay. So, so that's not going to McGrath. No, this is just, those are just grammatical things. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So carries. Okay, let's see. What do we got next? Request to recommend council approval to refill vacant finance director position. Jen, that's for you. Thank you. So Ron Ullman, our finance director, his last day was yesterday. Uh, so the position is currently uh, vacant. Uh, what we're looking to do in this case is to refill the position. Uh, you'll find that this position for the city is obviously key uh, in order to keep moving forward. The job description was last updated in 2018. Uh, we did make some minor changes. This job description would not go to McGrath for additional review, but would be uh, approved uh, tonight with the ability to uh, refill the position going forward. So staff's recommendation is the approval of the revised job description and the, abil the ability to begin the recruitment process for the finance director. Motion by Spiro, second by Passel to approve refilling the finance director's position. I might add post haste, um, like soon. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. And let's see. Next is request to recommend council approval to submit revised communications media specialist job description to the city's compensation consultant for paved scale place. Uh, Jen, you got this, um, but then now, yeah, but we're going to be talking about the communications director, so those are next too, but fill us in on what's happened here. Sure. So um, what I'm doing is with Tom running the cameras in the back and taking uh, this position for him. If we do have questions, he'll certainly come out and answer those. Um, but ultimately, you might recall uh, about a month or so ago, we had reviewed the uh, communication specialist job description. Uh, Tom had made some changes to the job and wanted to resubmit that to McGrath, which the committee approved and that was uh, sent in. Following the analysis of the job description, uh, the evaluation came back in pay grade 127, which is six pay grades higher than what the current position is. And in looking at that and reviewing the job, it was determined that the position was gonna create significant financial challenges within the communications department. And although that's the ideal uh, position that uh, was created to replace the communication specialist, uh, the request uh, was made by Tom to uh, re-review the job description, realizing that he may have delegated a little more than what uh, he had anticipated to it, just getting the, the job description back down. So in the packet, there's a revised job description for the communication specialist. We moved away from the um, video production uh, role and the revised second revised job description is now in your packet for approval. And what we would look for is to have this revised job description resent to McGrath for additional evaluation uh, to fill the communication specialist job. Discussion? What's your pleasure? So this, this one is downgraded from the other one. Um, and the other one was what, basically two pay grades, right? The other one was went up six pay grades. From six pay grades, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. What what did they what what's a major difference in your opinion? Yeah. So what had happened with the original um, revised job description is is it had taken all of the video production pieces out of the job description for the communication director and really put that as as the primary responsibility for all the cable channels a media production, taping of videos, those types of things. So really take those tasks out of the hands of the communication director to allow him to focus on uh, more city-based communication items. Finding where it landed, what he did is he went back to more of a blended model, which is what we had in the past. So if you look in the um, changes, it's going to be um, key changes were from the, where the position had been where David Bennett had filled in. Uh, is they're researching and working with networks with different nonprofits for um, the television station shows. It would be um, developing and maintaining operational and procedural guidelines. This, 
system documentation, program submissions, making sure that we're um, compliant with communication laws and standards, recruiting local community producers, recommending programs, monitoring the playback of, of online videos, uh, providing video duplication services when needed, and then the, providing the setup in a video and audio systems at various locations for special events. So what we did is we totally eliminated the prior revised job description, started from scratch, looked at the job description again. The, what's listed in the job description now, you can see it's very redlined if you look at it. So we cleaned up wording, reworded some um, duties from the last time it had been you know, originally established back in 2018, and then highlighted in yellow the areas that really are the key changes um, from the old just job description to the new job description. So um, I'm certainly happy to take any questions. I'm sure Tom would too. Um, other than that, we're looking for your approval. Ms. Passion, I'll make a motion to recommend approval for the council. And second by, yep. second by Mr. Wetzel. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, I think that this is something that uh, is probably to be expected with a new position such as these when we have a turnover. I know that um, David was probably doing a lot more than what was already listed in his job description and bringing the job description up to what he was doing is sort of what's going on. You, you mentioned that the, the job description you had before was considered to be the ideal, what we wanted. And that, so essentially what we're saying is we can't afford the ideal. Correct. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. so, what, so how does this affect Tom's job description? Are we, are we going to talk about that next? We are. So this is sort of past this and then we'll talk? You can choose to combine them together if you'd like. It's, it's certainly your option. We have a motion and a second on the floor already, don't we? Yes, we do. Go, Mr. Wetzel. I would move to table until we discuss the next item. I'll second. We have motion and second to table. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, okay. Okay, let's talk about this next item. Can, um, can you give us the major changes, the most important changes in this the, from the last one? Sure. So the communication uh, director job description was not revised during the last process. It was strictly the, um, the communication specialist job. So in looking at these, we had talked um, with Tom about the fact that if there were going to be substantial changes to the um, communication specialist job description, that if there were going to be changes to the, to the director, that we should do them at the same time and bring them both forward. So what you'll find in your packet again is a revised job description that shows a very red line version. A lot of it again is language cleanup, but the key areas are highlighted um, in yellow. And so uh, key changes would be reviewing, recommending and implementing new communication platforms to, to communicate information to the public, to develop and provide training for staff, uh, to update the city's website and the social media changes, to troubleshoot, engineer and operate complex audio video systems, to host and direct programs in the studio or on location. It serves as the city's, the staff person to the city's communication committee, participates in, EO, in the uh, EOC program as the public information officer, uh, maintains all the equipment that's used for checkouts by community producers, and then maintains an archive of video programs for staff in public use. And really much like uh, the last position, this position was created back in 2018, had never been in-house prior, and so, as this position was re-reviewed, this was putting the, the job duties that Tom is doing into the job to better reflect um, what's currently um, part of the role. So it, it's been, like I said, considerably changed. Um, however, we wanted to ensure that we have an accurate reflection. <clears throat> so what staff is recommending is that this also is sent to McGrath uh, for a review based on the changes to the job description and it, to ensure that the pay grade placement is appropriate. Has the communications committee seen both of these? I don't know that. Mr. Park, do you know? I, I believe they saw the original ones, whether they saw these revised ones or not, I'm not sure. I can go check with uh, Tom in the back. Tom, turn the, turn the TV on and off if you hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I don't think he's coming forward there, buddy. I have, a, mm -hmm. I have a question. In the oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, what is ta the current rate for the position? The, uh, uh, pay grade 131. Um, to answer your question, uh, no, that did not go to the communications committee this last uh, revised. Okay. Both of them, neither. All right. Um, do you think this is consistent with what they, what their vision of the the uh, two positions should be? Yeah, I, I do. I working with that committee uh, since its inception. I I do believe uh, they are uh, would agree with what's on here. They do right. want to make sure that is it primarily a budgetary concern? Pardon? Is it primarily a budgetary concern as opposed? Do you? Do you consider either or both of the job descriptions as revised as less than ideal? Or would it come out? Go ahead. Well, the first Answer one was yourself. ideal, yes. If we want to use my position, the director's position, if it was me or somebody else, focused on city communications, that's minus the public access, not spending all that extra time. Uh, we really want to get into new platforms for the people to engage, uh, working with department heads more. Um, so I took some of those duties that uh, were on that job description uh, that was sent out the first time for the communication specialist and then um, add those basically back onto my plate. And uh, that would uh, help with the financial uh, with that and lower that probably down. It will go up, I'm assuming, but not, not the steps that it did. Mr. Handler, then Mr. Wetzel. Um. Tom, I, I, I know some of these things are, are some sort of a protocol that needs to be taken. Can you, if this passes tonight by my colleagues, will you assure us that you'll have an answer from the communication committee the next time at the next uh, council meeting when this is presented? Yeah, I will. Pre I can present that to the next communications committee. Uh, we plan on having one uh, this Monday. Coming up, okay. and I will uh, bring it to their attention. Uh, they would uh, know that it has to go for eval anyway, uh, so nothing's done until that eval is done anyhow. So, well, I think this is very important because uh, we worked hard to get that particular committee in place, and uh, I don't like to go around them. I mean, this is my feeling. Yep, I will put it on the agenda for this Monday, Monday I believe. We have a meeting, Mr. Wetzel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, who wrote this uh, job description for the communications director? Um, I, I can answer. I helped write it along with uh, with Jen and, and Steve's uh, okay. assistance. So there were others that put forth um, suggestions for this job description. It wasn't just you. I, I guess, I don't know how you, I mean, it was the work with these, uh, Steve and Jen, but as in the committee, I don't believe so, no. I guess, you know, knowing that we do have a communication committee and, and hearing what Mr. Hendler said, I really hesitate. I mean, I'm all for finding out where we're at with this and, and getting it on the right pay scale and, and moving forward with all that, but I, I don't want to circumvent the authority of the communication committee and the fact that they haven't seen these um, concerns me some. Uh, the other question I have, I guess, is um, if we would have stayed with the initial presented communication specialist job description that went up six levels, would that have then caused your director position to change? Or would your director position have stayed the same? And what I guess I'm getting at here is, you know, if we if we have a new communication specialist position that bumps up three spots and a new director position that bumps up three spots, the same as the ideal up six spots, presumably, I mean, maybe dollars and cents a little off, but I, I guess I'm not really certain how all of this is going to affect because I, mean, I, I do think, you know, we created positions not having any idea. I don't have a communication to department let's throw one together here's what we think it's going to look like 
And I think it's good now that we're into it a few years to, to really nail it down and say, this is really what's happening and this is what our vision for the future is, which again, again I think is why the communication committee really needs to weigh in on this. The vision for the future just needs to incorporate that. I guess I'm just not real certain. I mean, if, if everything bumps up, we're gonna still be in a budget crunch. Is there a benefit to not having the ideal position in the position or you know, I guess I'm kind of wondering where we sit with that. And that's where I would really like to hear from the communications committee to know what their thoughts on that are. But I guess I'll look to my colleagues for what their thoughts we, are. There is a way we can do this, Don, I think, the, without slowing it down too much. Uh, what we can do is um, approve sending them on to McGrath for evaluation pending the approval of the, uh, of the or the, uh, not the approval, but the uh, concurrence of the communications committee. Would that make sense to you? Uh, yes, because it still has to be approved by the council before it's actually sent in. Right. right. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I just want to address Tom's question a little bit on um, those duties uh, that were uh, listed out of, of the position for communications director. Um, they they are they've been done. I've been doing those for quite some time, pretty much, you know, when I started. So and they were not listed on the current job description, and it wouldn't change either if we had changed the communication specialist or not. Those are duties of the of a director would be handling those. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Would you object to taking a vote on both of them at the same time? I think we can do that, I think. Okay, so basically what I'd be looking for is a motion to send it on to McGrath pending on pending the uh, concurrence with the communications. Motion by Handler, second by Wetzel. Discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you, Tom. Okay. So, point of order? Yes. With the other tabled motion, does that just become a moot point, or do we have to vote that down? That's a good question. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we had decided to, I had gotten the concurrence to vote on them both at the same time. So I think that would do, that would supersede the okay. Table. But done. Good. Thanks. Who knows? Anyway, uh, okay. Recommend the council approve the council approval of the 2022 city fee schedule presented by Josh Miller. Josh, what do you got? Good evening. Uh, yeah. So just to get a little background, uh, since 2017, we've been coming to the finance budget personnel committee and common council for. An update to our fee schedule. Some years we don't have a lot of changes. Other years, like this year, we have quite a few. Um, the, the real reason for the, the significant changes really stems from our use of with the Evolve software. We have really a, a better handle of how permit fees impact um, or are impacted by different permits, and we're able to track inspections and 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 track things a lot better this year. So we can kind of see how things cost out for us. Uh, we start this process in early September. Our department kind of takes a lead on it. We get information from different departments. Uh, they're responsible to go to their respective boards and committees for approval. And uh, then we kind of compile it and we, we bring it back to the Finance Budget Personnel Committee. Uh, so the, really the main changes are from our department, the Development Services Department and the Public Works Department. Um, I'll, I'll try to cover, uh, I'll cover our department pretty well. And then if uh, I'll try to cover Tom's uh, uh, area and if I've got questions, he's here to to address those. Um, so I won't. I'm not going to read every single permit. That would extend this meeting longer than necessary. But if you've got questions after each section, please let me know. Um, so really, we start with one and two family uh, residential permits. Um, the, the main couple of significant changes. We did increase the fees that are listed in the staff report, and you can see that there's a red line version, a clean version. And then for our Department of Development Services, we did an, a comparison of a lot of other, or other municipalities' fees. Um, a lot of things aren't apples to apples, even though if they say the same permit number uh, or same type of permit, there are different inspections done by different cities. And so it's really hard to compare, uh, especially for, for building permits. Uh, we're able to compare conditional use permits and rezoning stuff a little bit easier. But 
Um, so the main changes for one and two family residential permits is permission to start. Uh, we used to allow people to, to, to start a project of doing like footings and foundations, but we didn't charge a permit if they've completed, start, started the work within a certain time frame. Um, we felt like that was just uh, really more onerous to track. So we said, we're gonna charge a fee. <clears throat> if you're gonna do a service um, or do a project, we still are gonna do inspections on it. So we wanna make sure that we get a fee up front. Uh, the other item is uh, re-roofing. Uh, before, people used to do be able to re-shingle their house, and we didn't charge a fee. Only We only triggered a fee as if you did decking. Well, that was kind of an on-your-honor system, and a lot of times we find, we're finding issues with roofs, and roofs are one of the main structural components of the house that protects your, your house from weathering and stuff. And so if those shingles aren't done correctly, aren't inspected, uh, we've, we've seen a lot of bad shingling jobs. So we wanted to make sure that we're out there inspecting the, the items. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out is we, we are doing a lot more inspections and we want, we want to do that inspection. That provides a service to the community. It's not just, hey, let's collect a fee, let's submit an application, and maybe we'll check on it later. We're actually doing inspections, so that's why these fees are a little bit higher because we have to make sure and go out, make sure the work was done correctly. Um, manufactured home permits, uh, new manufactured home installation went from $100 to $200. There is quite a bit involved with those and a lot of... Uh, inspections because you have to make sure all the utilities and things are connected correctly and, and is, it is set appropriately. Um, residential HVAC permits, one of the changes that we made here, uh, we did increase the fee, but we did allow for a combo. So like if there's an AC and HVAC unit at the same time, we actually reduced the fee. That was one thing we, we got requested from our contractors uh, to do. So we incorporated that because that, again, would be the same inspection. We can do that at the same time. Um, raise permits for accessory structures, we did increase $10. Uh, non-residential uh, building permits. One thing that I wanted to point out here is we're looking for a change of use slash occupancy permit. It's a, a $50 permit. And what that means is if, a, if a, typically it's a commercial space, um, if it goes from like a retail space to an office space, a lot of property owners think that, oh, we can just do that. We can have a new business move in here. Not a big deal. Well, a lot of times that's a change of use and there's a different building code standard that, that applies and we want to make sure that those are caught before people do a significant remodel. In some cases you find out, well, your, your electrical's wrong, you got to do this and, and it's really expensive to do, to do that after the fact. So we're trying to catch these things proactively and so that's why we're implement, implementing a new change of use and occupancy permit um, in, in Marshfield. And, and a lot of other communities do charge this. They, they, um, we're just getting to it now, but it is a, is a very valuable service to try to do that preemptively rather than, hey, by the way, you know, Main Street says, hey, there's a new business in town. It's at such and such an address. And you look, it went from, you know, a, a retail to a doctor or, or a chiropractor office. And you're like, oh, that, that, we, we needed to inspect that. So um, this will this will allow us to do that more up front. Um, residential electric permits, we did split up service work um, from, we split up the category from re-energizer, or re-energizer, energizer boundary, re re-energize, repair, remove, and refasten. We split that up with uh, service work for upgrades, temporary, and generator permits. Um, those were um, uh, just just different levels of, of service work, so we wanted to make sure that those were split, and the, the service work for re-energize and repair is a little, little less expensive. Uh, also getting ahead of the game on solar, we're starting to get more and more uh, permits coming in for solar, which we want to encourage, but it does take a lot more time. Uh, we're putting together a, a package that has, uh, before you begin information, that, that people will be able to fill out a solar permit a lot more uh, quickly. And uh, we went through a, a program a number of years ago with Steve, uh, uh, Sunshot Solar Program is what the name sticks out to me, uh, where we put a lot of uh, work to, together to, to make solar permits a lot more um, not fast track, but just a lot more easy to, to take out. Um, and we really haven't really implemented that very well, but I think it's a good thing to do. So um, we're, we're incorporating that into our uh, Evolve permit software and making that, uh, and, and a lot of these, we've actually put together a lot of materials and pamphlets for people when they click on the building permit, they're able to see, they're able to match the, the, the fee schedule name with the building permit. So there's not really a question. They, they'll, they'll know what their permit fees are before they pay them. In the past, uh, there was some guesswork, and I'll, sometimes we were a bill collector. People would submit an application, we'd say, yep, it's fine, and we'd, we'd have to su submit a, an invoice to them. We're, we don't do that anymore. You pay uh, to play, basically. If you're going to take out a permit, you're going to pay for it ahead of time, and th less things fall through the cracks this way with this new permit software. 
um, non, um, non, non-residential electric permits, which is kind of a mis- mis- miscellaneous category, but most of those went up $10 uh, uh, per, per tier, and it's all based on uh, the cost of the job. And then um, we also do a reinspection fee, may apply for HVAC, plumbing, and electrical. Um, and that's just as basically if something was done wrong and we got to come back and reinspect it because you messed it up, uh, that, that should be a, an additional charge. Um, and then one of the major components that we're adding is a plan review fee. Um, and that's really, a, really provides a service. So our guys have really worked hard to get, uh, become a dele- we be, to become a delegated municipality, which means our inspectors have the capability to review plans that would other- otherwise have to go to the state. And if you have to send plans to the state, they have uh, very few plan reviewers. It can be very costly and time consuming. Sometimes you're like, you look at the schedule and you have to, you're 40 days out to get a plan review by the state. We can do it in, in a couple of days. And so not all permits can we review. Um, if it's over 50 cubic, uh, 50,000 cubic feet, it still has to go to state. And if it's a brand new construction, um, that'll still go to state. So we won't, we won't touch that because those are apples to apples. But sometimes um, when they do an re- interior alteration or a remodel, there's a lot of information that the state inspectors aren't be, being made aware of. Like there's another building attached to it or it's connected to a different use. Uh, there's a different type of occupancy they're not aware of. So our, our guys are able to, to know that what's on the ground a little bit better than the state inspectors. So we do still would still charge a plan review fee for some interior alterations. And again, it saves the, the contractor money and it saves them time and, and does, and, and it's a service that we can provide because our guys have been trained to be able to do that. So it's, uh, we've done this as a courtesy before, but these are really time-consuming projects. And so right now we feel that it's, it's important that um, we're able to charge a fee f- to recoup some of that time. Um, and then getting, uh, continuing on, uh, the, the plan commission review permits, we did review this with the plan commission uh, last month, and uh, we actually had uh, submitted a, 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 small, a lower increase in the fees, and then they, they had asked some additional questions saying, how much staff time does this take? And we talked about... Some of them are a little more significant, like a plan development or a campus plan review. Um, and so they actually in- increased the fees greater than what staff was recommending. And we, we support that. We just, we, you know, we're used to, you know, pr- doing a lot of work for a little bit of money in some cases for these, for these permits. But in, in reality, these do, we have to do public hearing notices. We have to do uh, a lot of work on the, on the front end sometimes before these even get to the permit stage. So once they do, uh, the, the fees are, are, are perfectly reasonable. Um, and then the, the wastewater fees, we just went from $100 to for any property to $100 per unit. And that's really what the intent was. The, the fee schedule previously just wasn't very clear. Um, so the next section is really the public works section, which the Board of Public Works did review these, uh, did approve them in the previous meeting. Um, and so really just, just kind of touch on some of the ones that are changing. So. New driveway access permits, those fees did increase um, um, from $20 to $50, and we split it up from street access to curb cut permit. Um, the driveway reconstruction permits, so there is a, a these, these are also in Evolve, our new planning software, um, or our permit software, I'm sorry, uh, which does help the engineering staff uh, track and monitor and, and follow up with inspections, and because it does keep those things uh, tracked for you, for us. And it's, then you can see, a report. So we're just in our first year, so we're excited to see at the end of the year kind of how many inspections we've done. I think I had Natalie pull it, and I think we had 2,500 inspections um, through through October this year. Uh, so it's nice to be able to see. Yep, we did inspections, and and uh, we followed up with those things. Um, uh, so additional, okay, driveway reconstruction permit. So we had a driveway permit uh, inline grades staking is required. So then people have to go out there and actually stake and survey making sure that the um, sidewalk grade is being met for the driveway. So that, that is uh, a substantial time. It used to be $10, and now it's uh, going up to 50 And then um, same with the driveway curb cut fee. That was $20, and now that is kind of being increased to $50. Um, culvert permits, uh, it's important that we the culverts are designed appropriately to make sure that the water flows down the ditch correctly and doesn't uh, isn't obstructing um, the water. And so we, we do have... Uh, Culvert installation permits um, and for different types of situations for new street access uh, and for secondary yard access and just the culvert replacement itself. Um, right away locate permits. Uh, this, I think, years ago used to be kind of a courtesy uh, fee or a courtesy uh, service. 
and people would say, hey, I want to know where my, my yard or my, my um, property lines are. And then they would, they would say, okay, we, would, we, would able to, we were able to find property pins on the, along the right of way because that's where we kind of, that's where our property is. So we should kind of know where that is. Um, so we go out and do that. And, and it, sometimes in some cases, it got kind of abused. People want to know, they just want to know where all their property stakes are. And so we would go do that. And then we were basically surveying their property, you know, by finding all their diff different property pins. And they, a lot of times they'll do that so they can figure out what the setbacks are for a shed or a fence and things like that, which is important. But the, the, the city, uh, you know, we can't just do that for everybody. So there has to be a fee. Otherwise, people are just um, taking advantage of that. Uh, stormwater permits, uh, erosion control, that is a significant review time for, for our city engineering staff. Um, that, that fee increased from $25 to $40. Uh, overweight permit load fees, uh, we have different uh, tiers, one day per, um, and then per week and by the month. Uh, we actually reduced the fee from $40 to $30 in the per week um, fee uh, or category. And then utility construction and excavation in the public right-of-way. Um, those are all listed on the, on the fees as well. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had to really address. I know, Tom, if you had anything else to cover um, or not, if, if he's here for questions, I guess. But uh, I know that's a lot of information. We had a lot of changes, and there's some significant uh, cost increases, which we don't love necessarily. Uh, one of the uh, issues that I mentioned in the staff report is, is we're having more and more permits taken out, at least in 2020, and we didn't really have a lot of revenue that came along with it. but it still required a lot of staff time and a lot of inspections. So um, we talk about revenue sources and things like that. Uh, we, we do feel that this would be a, a revenue enhancer for the city. Um, and we're, st I mean, we still don't break even on these by any means. Our staff are still, um, uh, we're, we're not recouping what it costs to, to provide this service. And I do think, um, I think all of our staff, we provide a high quality service. We're very responsive. And now with the Evolve software, people can apply for a building permit in their pajamas at, at you know midnight on Saturday if they want to. So um, we're, we're able to to have that access to to our permits uh, right away and, and from anywhere. So I think things are getting better um, with that step and with that process. So discussion. Well, then, do we have a motion? Don't everybody speak at once. A motion by. Spiros, second by Ashholt. Discussion? Just a quick couple of, just a question. I mean, I, some of these, some of these things are brought up. There, there's some, some pretty substantial increases in the cost. Do you suspect that that would might be a disincentive for people to say, well, I'm not going to pay that much to do that? And basically just try and do it without a permit? I think it would be hard in most of these because most of these are going to involve a contractor. Um, and a lot of them are non-residential or electrical, and we know who are doing who are doing the work on those. It's the probably like the if we were to do that for an accessory structure or or fences or things like that that maybe aren't as noticeable or as obvious. But I, I think I think we'll I don't think we'll see a major drop or even a drop at all in the number of permits taken out. Uh, and, and we do have a communication plan for these uh, changes. We have a distribution list for our contractors that once, if this gets approved, we will be sending out letters or an email uh, blast to the different contractors, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, um, and then uh, probably working with Main Street and other, uh, other organizations to on the change of use and change of occupancy. So education is going to be a, a big part of this. Um, the roofing one, we, we, you know, there's always going to be weekend warriors that put their roofs on and, and over the weekend, and we may not catch all of those. Um, but I think, uh, and that's a new permit, so I don't expect a lot of um, always 100% compliance. But where, 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 there, where there are taking out permits, we'll be, be able to provide a, a better service and educate people how, to, how they need to do a, a roofing project. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Wetzel. This is a bit of, of sticker shock. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is a lot to swallow. That's, that's my only comment, I guess. I, I, I can share your, your concerns, and I was sitting here listening to this, and 
And uh, I was looking at, well, I mean, what, you, even something is a conditional use permit to pay, to pay for the plan, uh, pay the plan commissions, you're gone from 250 to $300 for that. I see a lot of things. And I see that you went, what you did in a lot of cases is you went and compared where we were with other communities. And I think you raised them to be competitive or, or, or comparable with other communities. But how does that relate to what it would actually cost us to do those things? I mean, have you done anything or work study on? I mean, how much does it cost to to send an inspector out in the field to go and see if these shingles are on right? I mean, is it? I mean, come on, tell me how. Well, I mean, you look at the number of inspections and the, you know the number of times it takes. And our guys did did an analysis. I, I could I could bring more information back. Um, and I don't know that every single permit I could do that for, but. I think for the most part, we looked at uh, the number of inspections and the, no the amount of time it takes and um, you know what, what the public re requests of us to do. Um, and it, 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 I mean, you look at the number of hours in the day and, and how many, how, how much revenue we get and our inspectors are pretty busy. We're not sitting around not doing inspections and not reviewing permits and things like that. So uh, the, the inspections for the most part or the, the fees for the most part aren't, aren't covering the costs. And you look at the revenue versus what our our budget is; it's not even close. Mr. Weston, I understand that there's a a concern that the amount of staff time you put in and and the amount of money you get back in fees doesn't match. But that's part of what living living in a city is. I mean, mm -hmm. as a taxpayer, part of my taxes go to some of that. I, I just you know I'm looking through this and I didn't realize that there were fees for some of these things that there's fees for. It, Ra to raise a accessory structure. So if I have a little shed on my property and I want to tear it down, I have to pay fifty dollars. <laughs> wow. And with some of the shed things that they build nowadays made out of I don't know, rubber made. Well I have to pay fifty bucks to take down a you know, a, a 10 by 10 rubber made shed. I, it no, just... I think we would classify it as a, anything over 300 square feet would really fit because we've broken down the accessory structures into into different categories. If it's basically got a foundation on it or a slab, uh, that's where, where, where that would be applicable. Um, if it's a 10 by 10 rubber made, it's considered a yard shed essentially, and that's not really. Okay. I, I, again, I, I go back to the, you know, part of living in the city and having the taxes that are paid are to have some of these services. and. I mean, obviously there should be fees for, for inspections and, and things like that, but I also don't think that a fee schedule should be a moneymaker. And I'm not and saying not. that it is a yeah, moneymaker, but uh, you know. You, just, you did say revenue enhancement. It, it would be a revenue enhancement compared to what we are, but it's certainly not, like I, I agree. And, and it's not, it's doesn't, I, I've said a few times now, it doesn't cover the cost. And ultimately it's, it's and we're doing the work regardless. And if, if, uh, if this, committee or board, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time, we probably spent um, 100 hours working on a fee schedule, looking, doing research and making sure that things are lining up. Um, if if the council or, or a committee doesn't, you know, if there's one, even if you want to revisit this, we, we certainly can, but it's it's the revenue that's coming into the city. None, none of it goes into our pocket, so I don't think there's any, if you guys don't want this, we can, you know, you can make all the fees zero and we'd, we'd be able to provide you know, we'd be very busy, but um, and, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but I, right. I'm just saying it's it's up to you guys. If 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 we want to visit more of these individually, we can. If there's some things you think are jumped up way too high, we can we can certainly look at that. Um, I think it's needed. It's not something that we do every year. I think uh, when the Board of Public Works reviewed these, they said, let's try to look at these so there's not such a big jump, you know, at one time, and let's kind of look at these on a yearly basis. And, and we're trying to uh, the the evolved permit software, as I said really brought a lot of light to some of these issues of saying, you know, okay, we're doing this, these many inspections for this project. Okay, that that probably needs a higher fee then. Um, yeah, and, and I didn't mean to <laughs> say that I thought you were pocketing fees. I mean, right, you no. brought that up and that wasn't anything that I ever discussed. I guess the only concern that I have is, you know, some of these fees are jumping up two, three, four times what they were. I mean, it, that's, that's a huge increase when you're talking about a 300 percent increase in a fee that's a huge increase um, like which i guess i don't um i think most fees were like ten dollars or 25 percent 
most of them are 25%, I think. Well, and, and you know, maybe I was looking at some of the cheap fees. Curb and gutter goes from 20 to 50. Um, you know, driveway, 10 to 20. Uh, there was one here from 10 to 30 for a right of way location. And, and yeah, those are the smaller ones, but even some of the bigger ones, the, um, you know, the, uh, where was it? The um, master plan fees going from 250 to 500. That's, that's 100%. That, that's 100% of an already expensive. Those are the plan commission, right? Yeah. Those plan commission ones, right? excuse me. You know, the, I guess the, the concern I have, and, and we all want to see growth, and we all want to see people improving their properties, and we all want to see, you know, progressive moving forward in, in building and all that. Is this going to hamper that? That's, I guess, my big concern. If I'm looking at building in the city, and I all of a sudden see that my fees have jumped up, and I'm going to be conservative here and say a mere 70%, then am I going to be encouraged to build in the city or am I going to be encouraged to, you know, get that plot of land two miles out or, or a mile out or even across the street from the city limits and build there because, hey, the fees are a whole lot less. I don't have to worry about it. I don't know. I, and I don't want to discourage people from building in the city. Mr. Paschal would like to speak. Mr. Um, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to cut you off, Tom, but no, I, th I think that the, Probably part of it is that, like you said, some of these are kind of obscure things and probably nobody's looked at the fee for tearing down a shed in your backyard for many years. And now our fee schedule has fallen behind what the norm is and it's time to bring it up. And hopefully once we get to a base, as Josh said, we only will move in small increments from this point. Mr. Barr. Thank you. And, and I don't want to speak to any of the specific fees that Tom and others are talking about. I mean, I, I, that's not anything I'm looking at closely right now. But there's a flip side to this. If you think about budget time when we go through and, and trying to hold the, the line on taxes and that type of thing, that these are essentially user fees is what they are. And, you know, if we're not cl coming close to the cost of what it takes to provide the service in terms of inspections or administrative overhead and those kind of things, we're essentially putting the cost of these types of services for contractors and, and builders and other people on the rest of the taxpayers. So that's kind of the, the flip argument to not increasing these. Now, again, I'm not speaking to any specific ones. If there's concern about going up 100% or whatever, uh, that's, that's something to be talked about. But in general, we need to make sure that we're keeping up with the true costs of providing these services um, if we're going to be fair to all the taxpayers. Rebecca. Well, I agree. I mean, I think we have to, you know, charge enough money that, you know, it's not costing the city to do things. Okay, I get that. But I also get that it's a lot. It's a sticker shock. It's a, it's a lot of red number, red lines on this on these pages. And it's really just, a, it's a difficult thing to swallow, honestly, because, you know, we've, we've you know, are also doing a tax increase. We did a tax increase last year. and. We're looking at probably another tax increase next year, and then we're going to hit them with these pages and pages and pages of a lot of increases in fees. Um, and I think it's just a sheer volume of the, the number that we went up on seems um, seems somewhat excessive. You know, there's uh, Tom. Do you mind if I step on you here for a minute? Um, the, one thing, and I'm addressing this primarily to, to Mr. Barg's comments, and that is, um, you know, we're, we're, this is the, uh, the, the basic line of what we do, of what we're supposed to do as a council is protect the public health, safety, and welfare. And I see the departments that, we're, we're, that are charging a fee here that we're, we're looking at here as being departments that we need to protect public health, safety, and welfare. I don't I see it as a service, and I don't see the recipients of it as users for user fee. I see them, I see it as this is something we as a city want to do. We want to protect to make sure that um, there's no uh, dishonest uh, electrician out there that's wiring a house that's going to burn down. We want to, we want to do that. 
that's a service we provide. That's part of the joy of living in a city as opposed to two miles out on an acre of land. Okay. So I, I don't, I, I'm not as, I'm not as gung ho on user fees in general, because I think that's anathema to what we were supposed to be doing. And, and that's, that's just the, the way I feel about it. Tom, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, geez. Nick, you need help. <laughs> if you got more to say, I'm not going to cut you off. No, no, no. I have. I'm no, if I get, if I get farther, I might be pounding. So, so okay. don't do that. Go ahead. All right. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been to meetings looking at alternative revenue sources. <clears throat> Fees are taxes. You might call them a fee, but they're a tax. We can add a fee to a, a vehicle registration. Well, we called it a wheel tax because it's a tax. So whether you call it a fee or you, it, it's money out of the taxpayer's pocket, it goes to city government to cover services. What I, part of what I, I see the value of, of development is larger tax base. So I build a house and I increase the value of that property and I pay more taxes, which then help fund the city. Now, if I'm slapping on a whole bunch of fees to be able to build that same house, it's, you know, suddenly becoming a much more expensive house and, and maybe not as appetizing of a project. I'll get off my soapbox. What I'm going to ask for is a follow-up because I'm going to very, very, very grudgingly go along with this. But I would like a follow-up next year to know what kind of an impact this had on growth and projects. And, you know, are we seeing that people are ratcheting back on their work? Are they? I'd like to know if there's an impact um, after we pass this um, before we do another fee hike in another year. Without objection, I'll recognize Mr. Turchi because he's been having his hand up there like he's like, it's, I think it's probably hurting by now. I know there were a lot of red lines in ours too, but you know, when we talk about like utility cut permits, those are, are utilities that are not part of the city or not entities of the city that are costing the city taxpayers dollars. And so what we do is we are over the past uh, five to seven years, We've been keeping track of how much time we actually spend monitoring utilities that are cutting the streets that are how, what do we mark up for patches what do we do for these various things so what we're doing is we're trying to recover those costs for the taxpayer so the taxpayer is not carrying the burden that is being handed to us by the uh, utilities itself the um uh Curb cut or the uh, culvert permits were changed this year. In in our mill in place process, we we provide the culvert and then we pave the end of the driveway. And each of those driveways are assessed based on that condition. If currently right now, if somebody calls just to have an individual driveway replaced, they get a new culvert, and if it's asphalt, they get a brand new driveway apron. Well, we're adding the cost of that asphalt into that to recoup that cost because we don't want the taxpayer that all the taxpayers pay for a benefit that one property owner receives. So what we're doing is we're trying to be as fair as possible. And ours do not recover 100% of the cost, but we are trying to just make it convenient too. So if there's any questions on the engineering or other fees in there. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Handler. Mr. Chairman, you know, I've heard uh, a lot of good things being said and uh, there is some reluctancy on other discussions, but it's getting late. I'd like to call the question. Oh, that's your favorite motion. Thank you very much. All those in favor of calling the question, say aye. Aye. And remember, there's no debate on calling the question. Okay, so we are now calling. So we are now ready to vote on nay. the to adopt it. Nay. What? Nay. Nay. Oh, one nay. Okay. I'm sorry. It was two thirds. But didn't it didn't matter? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, there. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the fee schedule, to or recommend the approval of the fee schedule to the Common Council. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ah, no. Thank you. Okay, it passes. All right. Okay. Next is update on securing assessor services. Uh, Steve, you got the floor. 
I do, thank you uh, very much. The, uh, the assessing process, working to find a new city assessor starting in 2022, uh, really kind of jumped out with the, uh, the effort in late September when we put out a request for, request for qualifications, an RFQ. At that same time, a team was appointed of seven staff members and three council members. The three council members were Nick, Ed, and Tom Butkey. And they, that group has done a really good job. We met uh, several times along the way. The uh, RFQ is sent to 15 qualified firms and individuals in our area who perform assessing services. We received three responses. We interviewed all three of those firms in late October. The team narrowed the, the field down to two candidates that they were most interested in at that time. Reference checks were then conducted. The team met last Friday and uh, we selected a preferred candidate to be our new city assessor. I did meet with that uh, company, it's Ford Appraisal. And I met with them actually in this room, I'm looking at where Pat is sitting in. Uh, the two conference rooms were tied up, so we turned those tables around. I say I forgot to turn them, or uh, move them back apart to where they were. But I met with Steve Shepro and uh, Beth from his firm to talk about the framework of a potential contract. And I think, uh, I think it's gonna work out really nicely. Uh, gonna try and put that together, have the team take a look at it um, as soon as that's ready and then bring it back to this body on December 7th. Uh, Ford is the maintenance provider of, of assessing services for both Stevens Point and Wisconsin Rapids. The reference checks in both those communities are, are very good. They're very satisfied with Mr. Shepro and his firm. So I think we're, we're getting a, a, a good uh, contract assessor. So with that in mind, that, that's the, the update. Look for your next meeting to see a, a copy of a contract for assessing services with forward appraisal. Any questions? If not, we'll move on to suggested items for future appraisals. Let's see, we got a half an hour before Mr. Wetzel has to leave, so we can just talk about anything if you'd like. Any other, any other items for future agendas? If not, all those in favor of adjourning, please.